Welcome to Absolutely PlayStation Steam Gamers, Tower Talk Episode 8, uh, The Season of Redacted Changes, Part 2. Um, so, we will be putting out a video a bit before this, going over all the armor changes and some of the exotic armor changes. This one is going to be the one about weapon changes. Mm -hmm. Coda, what do you think of the 12? <sighs> It's a beefy one, and can I just say, we've heard, we found out a lot that's happening next week at the season, um, but we still don't know what the season's called. That was the biggest thing that surprised me out of this twelve. I was like, I was at work still, so I was just kind of doing a quick scan through. Mm -hmm. and I wanted to see whether they gave the name out, and they didn't. I know. They, have they done this? I think Arrivals was kind of a. Surprise Arrivals, season. they did, but I want to say it was like a week before. This is going to be two days before it drops. Yeah. The 25th, I think, is what they said. Huh. Hold on. The 25th no, is going to be... The 24th is whenever it drops. Well, this is it. We're not go We're not knowing what it's called until we're in it. <laughs> you know what? For some reason, I thought it was Tuesday and not Thursday. <laughs> Oh my lord! So we're not gonna know until we're in the season. That is, yep, unusual. Yeah, I that, feel like arrivals waited a really long time. Mm. That means this season is gonna be big, lore wise. Is my guess. They can't show us anything. No spoilers. No nothing. Yeah, that. I mean, obviously they're keeping the secret for some reason. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to find out what that reason is. I mean, these last two seasons have brought in big characters with Keitel uh, and Mithrax, so I, I'm I'm just wondering where the story's going to go at this point. Yeah. Hopefully it's good, because we got six months of it. Yeah. Uh, so I guess we'll go over what they did tell us, which is still a lot. Uh, like, we got, we, we got a lot to talk about, so we might as well start talking. So they started off by kind of... Uh, generalizing a lot of the terms that the community and them use to try and get everyone on an equal footing as to what it means whenever they balance. They went over what fall out, fa fall off projectile types are, which I was surprised to hear that a fully drawn bow is a hit scan and not a projectile. That means that the second you fully draw that bow and you release it, it's going where you pointed, like it, a hundred percent. Yeah, that surprised me as well, but it makes sense because. You think if it's a fully drawn bow, then it would be traveling at a much faster speed. And at that mm -hmm. point, for the games, for gaming's sake, they just decided to make it hit scan instead of um, non hit scan. Right. Uh, they, like you said, they talked about fall off, damage fall off start distance at which distance at which damage fall off begins or stops doing maximum damage, and then the damage fall off end is when you hit the damage floor, essentially, mm. how far it, away you are. When you... It's just a lot of term clarification yeah. um, to go into the balance patching, of which there was quite a bit, for one thing. The quick swap glitch is no more, supposedly. Well, uh, right, you good. jumped ahead a little bit in the TWAB, but yes, it looks like they are going to be getting rid of that glitch. Did you use that? Uh, I mean, for the Templar fight? Whenever uh, I would farm it with some of the guildmates, yeah. Because, but not generally whenever I'm actually playing the game. I don't, uh, because I feel like it's cheap anyways. I'm not going to lie, I never bothered learning how mm -hmm. to use it. DPS has never been such a gate that I had to learn how to use it just yeah. to be that optimal. Plus I'm a titan, so I just thunder crash. It's easier <laughs> that way. But <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad that they're fixing it i know some people might be upset by it but um i was watching dado's video on this and he made a good point saying that they would have to start balancing around this if they chose to leave it in mm -hmm. and instead it's just easier if they yeah. address the address the glitch it's not how it's designed to function and then they can continue making encounters from here on out i'm curious if it's going to cause any hiccups in raid groups they, uh I, I doubt it because it, again you don't really need to optimize dps to that extent and that's why it'd be terrible if they did have to start building bosses around the idea that everyone's going to be quick swapping 
Because yeah. then if you don't know how to, uh-oh. <laughs> right. And it, it puts people like myself who don't want to really cheese mm-hmm. encounters at a disadvantage if that becomes like the just the meta way to do it. It's required in order to like pass encounters. Right. I wouldn't like that. I will say, being a big Halo fan, uh, it, it it's a little bit sad that there's no way to like do that optimal quick swap and stuff because that used to be a thing you could do in Halo, was uh, rapidly swapping between your weapons and stuff, but different type of game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't think it has that much of a place in a game like Destiny. PvP wise, it was causing issues, and mm-hmm. PVE wise, it was causing issues. So. Glad they fixed that. Speaking um, of something causing issues PvP wise, stasis ooh, weapons. Nice transition. <laughs> See, we're getting I, I primary. <laughs> we're getting primary stasis weapons. Can I? So yeah, they're go, they're going into the heavy and the kinetic slot, not the energy slot, to like prevent it from being dug down. Can I say how much of a like wrong feeling it is that some a kinetic weapon is stasis also? The terminologies don't mix there. <laughs> Somebody made a good point that um, all darkness weapons are probably going to be in the kinetic slot, mm. which is going to be absolutely horrible once we have six different elements that we need yeah. to do match game on. Uh, everyone was always ha- talking about how much they want like a poison element. Um, both Malfeasance and Thorn are kinetic too. Could just convert yeah. those over to poison. <laughs> I imagine that's what they'll do. And Wither Horde. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not like there aren't already weapons in that slot that function in that way. Mm-hmm. But for now, it seems like Stasis weapons won't inherently do anything different no. um, from they will have special the kinetic perks. weapons. Right. Special perks, but um, you're not going to be getting frozen in PvP. Well... I didn't read it that way. It's you will you can get frozen, kind of like how the the uh, exotic pistol works, right? If you Which... get a kill, then you get the special state that lets you free someone. So you can be frozen, but not obnoxiously so. Oh right, you have to get a kill in order for the next one to freeze. Mm-hmm. So question: What is Cryostegia's exotic perk now? Just a general perk. <laughs> to be fair, yeah. Crystal is just kind of a meh weapon. We could just they should that one just exists. they should just convert it to a legendary. Mm-hmm. Or its exotic perk is that it's in the energy. No, it's not in the energy slot. It's in the kinetic slot. Yep. <laughs> I don't know. That doesn't sound like a very exotic weapon to me anymore. Yeah, um, it it wasn't all that exotic when it came out, anyways. <laughs> Next up was a change I didn't actually expect them to do. No. But I am excited they're doing it. It's going to... I feel like it's really going to change up the flow of gameplay. Mm-hmm. Um, um, particular with a, Particularly with a couple exotic primaries. And that is that primary ammo will now be infinite. Yeah. Um, Mike? Pull out your sweet business. Pull out your Sweet Huckleberry. <laughs> Huckleberry, Risk Runner. Yeah. Risk Runner, once you get that perk active, you won't ever have to reload as long as there's enemies alive that you're killing. Uh, Sweet Business with Acting War Rig. Does it ever you're stop just, shooting? You're just never going to stop shooting. <laughs> um. Yeah, I feel like they're going to have to make like special exceptions for these weapons. I I don't think they will uh because primary weapon kinetic weapons have always been kind of the the lesser of the three in my opinion like the special weapons are where it's more at with like you know your shotguns, fusion rifles, snipers, and then your heavies take out the boss. Your connects just for the in between anyways and they're buffing some of those up as we'll get into later unless you're running risk runner yeah risk runner is going to 
Risk Runner. But Risk Runner's nerfed. already Risk amazing. Runner is going to get nerfed. It's already amazing, and they just made it infinitely better. The only downside to that gun was that you ran out of ammo if you had the perk active for too long. <laughs> that was the only downside to that gu- that weapon. Yeah. And I just the my other point is that I just don't want to listen to Sweet Business going off in Crucible constantly all the time because nobody has to put it down it's gonna be disgusting <laughs> <laughs> stupid I, I like it i like this change uh they're also as last week was mentioned inertia overrides getting some changes with ammo bricks being tweaked for the no primary ammo bricks anymore which is also going to cut down on map clutter also there are some like right bugs you get from too much map clutter that can like kick you out of it your can game cause, or whatnot. right it can cause crashes yeah and this will at least help with that it might not fix the issue but it's it's a start <laughs> another nice thing is that um i mean you don't often conf- confuse them with orbs of light but it'll just be like one less thing they are like when you're looking for orbs with your charge mm-hmm. with light builds it's one less thing, like you said, less clutter on the map. Yeah, so. I actually confuse them with some of the elemental wells. So yeah, because <laughs> they're about the right. same size, and that's getting buffed. Uh, along with this, we're also getting changes to things like drop mag, compact arrow, these things that used to have to do with your magazine size, but now they instead mess with your like reload speed. Right. Uh, um, I don't think anybody's gonna be too worried about drop mag yeah i'm not sh- i'm not sure that was anybody's favorite perk so i was just i just thought of it my gnawing hunger with rampage subsistence is going to be disgusting <laughs> i have an overflow rampage that too but yeah anything that can feed itself back into the magazine is gonna be good <laughs> yeah yeah we'll see i i have a feeling this is gonna get walked back yeah, or they're and there, gonna have to make some big changes to how some more perks work. This is gonna cause notes, issues next season. There were some notes about fighting lion because that also has to do with primary ammo bricks and stuff. But we'll get into that in a little bit. I will say we can pour one out for uh, Jeronia, one of our community <laughs> leaders over in the uh, comic <laughs> story and Discord. Uh, the the man's uh, fighting lion. That's his baby fanatic. And yes. <laughs> Um, before we move on, I did want to point out, uh, for trials weapons, apparently mm-hmm. there's going to be a new rework and how you're able to farm for the weapons. Yeah. I'm wondering if they're going to be like bounty specific. That would be nice. Uh, or maybe whenever you're turning in tokens, you just select the one you want to turn in, you know, 50 tokens in for. Or it could be a quest like the, uh, essences that are on mm-hmm. the moon. Oh, I, yeah, I wouldn't yeah. mind a system like that. Oh. Uh, all this to just really help tr- make trials more accessible to the layman, help get that population up. Along with that, they're adding new perks to these weapons. It's going Which... from five perks to seven in each column. But what are the perks? That what are these adding? new perks? <laughs> like, if it's two crappy perks, then nobody cares. Yeah, but typically trials weapons have good perks, except for. So this is just a personal thing. A little side note. Um, I really hope with this rework of trials, they put the old armor back into rotation. Yes, that'd be like nice if, because I mean nobody's, especially with transmog, nobody's worried about which armor set you have. So it'd be nice to be able to earn it somewhere. Well, hey, some old things are getting brought back into rotation. Like the lectern weapons are now getting new perks added to them. Uh, I believe since it's a targeted farm, they're getting like three additional options in their pool. So, I, well, okay, so I don't know if this is specifically for lectern, but um, they said they wanted to redo the way they're reissuing weapons. So, right. Dreaming City weapons, Moon weapons, they when they reintroduced them, they had none of the same perks that they had the first time around. Right. And sometimes they're realizing they made a mistake Mm -hmm. and that they kind of changed the identity. So what they said is moving forward, they're going to reintroduce old weapons, 
and only change out the bottom two to three most used perks. Mm -hmm. The bottom. So basically try to get people to try new things, but if they want to use their old stuff from year two, year three, then Mm. they're able to. And it also helps keep these weapons from losing what they, why you would farm it, you know? Like, uh, for instance, with Trials, uh, the shotgun god roll changed after a certain amount of time because you couldn't get the, uh, like, quick draw or whatever on it at that time. And a lot of people were bummed out that they would then farm the shotgun and they weren't getting the rolls that they wanted and they never got the roll that they wanted, so they felt at a disadvantage to other people that did. Not a case anymore, hopefully. Hopefully. Now, my question is, in Season 15, if I go do a Dreaming City weapon, is that change going to be retroactive to those weapons? Because if it's not, they're going to have another issue on their yeah. hands. Um, I, I don't know. I'm hoping that they saw th- through that, you know? Right. Like, they have uh, they understood where they messed up. Are they going right. to <laughs> fix their mess up, though? Or are they just going to move forward doing that? Same mess up under a different name. <laughs> um, so normally I wouldn't skip around in the twelve like that, but since we're talking about reissuing weapons, right? So, trials of the nine weapons are how, coming back in the prophecy dungeon. How did it take them so long to bring these weapons back? They're so good. The pulse rifle is one of my favorite weapons that was ever issued. We've seen uh, a lot of feedback yeah. to bring forward weapons originally from the Trials of the Nine and thought that adding these nine themed weapons to the dungeon was a great fit. Yeah. No. That's duh. what I expected <laughs> day one in the Prophecy Dungeon. <laughs> like, uh, and look how nice these weapons look. Yeah, Coda, on, throw, on the, Coda, uh, yeah, yeah, throw this yeah. up. Like, look how nice these weapons look. Why weren't these the weapons that Prophecy was dropping? From the start. I have no idea. And hopefully they have random rolls, not just the static rolls. I mean, they should. Uh, But I want the old rolls still on them because the Pulse Rifle and the AR were, like, amazing for their archetypes. I'm not going to lie. Just based on looks alone, I might run these weapons. Like, Mm -hmm. for no other reason than how slick they look. Yeah. I'm lying. I, I I won't do that. I'll run whatever's best for the encounter but (laughs) sorry (laughs) uh no but these weapons were also like just amazing back in the day for running the leviathan raid and whatnot in general so i wouldn't be too surprised if they're still pretty well in the meta so i actually met benny back when destiny 2 first came out Mm -hmm. and one of the first things we did was play trials of the nine it's me, him, and Rob. That's like one of two times I went into Trials of the Nine. It was you, that bad of an experience. Really, I was just thinking I miss Trials of the Nine because it was it Nobody was it's misses different. Misses Trials of the Nine. It's different enough from tri- uh, like Trials of Osiris. Like you had the the capture point, like setting the bomb and whatnot, and that game mode's just gone now. And I'm yeah, sad I don't about like that. I don't like that they removed game modes. Yeah. They should all be rotating through in the that bottom uh, weekly rotating mm-hmm. crucible game type. Like, why would you get rid of also, game modes like that? I think the reason why nobody liked Trials of the Nine was because nobody liked the meta at the launch of D2. Yes. Uh, where it was Mida multi-tool down the end of a call <laughs> corridor. But in the modern meta, I feel like Trials of the Nine would actually be really fun. So they should just bring it back in general. Just my idea. I don't uh, think they're going to since they just released the weapons. And also they're trying to get people to play Trials of Osiris right now. True. So, uh, Other weapons that are coming back are some stuff that's being added to the world loot pool. Here's a picture of it. Uh, one of the big standouts is the Scatlock Assault Rifle. Uh, that thing is a monster in both PvE and PvP. And so I want to see with some new random rules on it. I like it. The Pulse Rifle is okay. And the hand cannon's okay. The other ones kind of suck. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not really excited about any of these. Maybe the hand cannon. But I don't know. Maybe we'll see when they reissue these with new perks. Maybe some of them will will start to shine. But mm-hmm. I don't know. 
I still got a bad taste in my mouth uh, regarding the factions. So I'm not sure if I want to be rocking these weapons right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> the new weapons are, of course, coming to the three core playlists. Uh, Gambit, Crucible, and uh, the one I don't do. Strikes. <laughs> um, they look cool. I'm not going to use the pistol. But it, look, it does look like a Halo 1 pistol. So Yeah, it does. I'm... See, just seeing weapons like this doesn't really excite me. I need to know what, like, the perks are going to be, what, what archetype they're going to fall right. into. Like, without having the that knowledge, I can't mm-hmm. really get excited about these weapons. I am glad that there is going to be more uh, activity-specific loot available. Mm-hmm. And I've learned recently that you can't judge the archetype of the weapon on the, like, what it looks like because with the last season it looked like the duke was coming back and i was like oh the best 120 in the game's gonna be here and it was a 180 and it's still really good but (laughs) but it's not the duke (laughs) it's not the duke (laughs) um next season's ritual quest weapon is going to be a rocket launcher with explosive light it's beautiful (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it looks really good. I'm surprised this isn't an exotic weapon. Right. Uh, I don't know why its color scheme makes me think, oh, it's a Gallahorn. It's got tracking. It's it's, it's going to have probably like chain reaction on it. It's going to be a good <laughs> rocket launcher. I hope so. I don't know. I As much as I used a sword and grenade launchers this season, I kind of hope the meta really changes up for next mm. season. Not that I didn't have fun with it this season, I just... The game feels fresh when we switch what we're using every season, so... Right. I think there will, of course, be a new exotic weapon in the Battle Pass for the season, but they've told us absolutely nothing, so... <laughs> right. Um, do you want to do exotics next, or do you want to do archetype changes? Uh, let's start with the exotics. Um, okay was a talking point in the guild chat earlier today before the TWAB dropped about the anarchy changes. I saw uh, some of that. I didn't yeah. have time to respond to it. but So it got reworked into fitting more of its role as being like a shut down an area, you put down a bunch of mines and they kill whatever comes outdoors and whatnot. It's not meant for boss DPS. It never really was. It was just really handy for that with the quick swap meta. Right. Uh So it has had its total reserves dropped, which we actually talked about this back whenever they announced it. That was your idea, was to drop its reserves. And they did, from 26 to 16. So, uh, See, I don't see that as a nerf, because if you're efficiently using your Anarchy and you have the right finders on, mm -hmm. which they are changing finders, But my point still stands. I never really ran out of anarchy. You no, because you're just be using anarchy to run out of anarchy. So yeah, you're firing like two shots a minute. It's not something you have to worry about. Uh, no. They also reduced the damage it does to bosses by thirty percent. That was my idea for what to do to it. So Bungie listens to our podcast, is what I'm understanding. <laughs> hey, what's up, Bungie? Um, yeah. I... <laughs> Yeah, it's not, supposed to be a bo- it's not supposed to be a boss DPS weapon, so just reducing it against bosses is the best way mm-hmm. to nerf it. Because it'll still because be perfectly fine in Nightfalls. It works on champions. Yeah, it said champions are not bosses, so, I mean, basically majors, minors, it, it's an add mm-hmm. cleanup weapon, which yeah. it's basically a less good risk runner. Yeah. And because it'll be doing less damage to the big bosses, it will open up the meta to allow other heavy weapons to see light, like rocket launchers. Fair. Fair point. Um, Anarchy, you had your time. Yeah. you know It's kind of like when they nerfed Izanagi's. I wasn't sad only because it had such a, a glorious moment in the spotlight. Mm -hmm. anarchy's had its moment for a year and a half two years now yeah this is like when recluse got nerfed like everybody was expecting it we didn't know when it was going to happen we knew it had to happen 
but it, it had its time. It was a good gun. I yeah. will put it in my vault and never shard it unless I need the exotic. I mean, I'll, uh, it still has its <laughs> uses, So, yeah. but to be fair, a lot of its uses are Wither Horde's uses too now. <laughs> right. I think Wither Horde all around will be a better weapon to mm -hmm. use if you need to do. It was already close as a... Uh, as as a bottleneck weapon, yeah. What's the term I'm looking for? Area control. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, let's look at our next exotic, xenophage. So, yeah. So here's one that won't see much use again <laughs> anytime soon. They reduced um, its rate of fire from a 120 down to a 90 RPM. Okay. And they re it, they make it to where it sees less of a damage buff compared to all the other machine guns. Which, to be fair, it, it does a lot is getting damage. a damage buff. Yeah. Uh, they actually explained it. They said um, it does benefit from damage per bullet buff of machine guns, but at a slower rate of fire to compensate, it will result in lower damage per second, mm -hmm. but higher burst damage and sustained damage, since it's now more ammo efficient. So, here's, here's where I see it being dropped is Xenophage's best fight that it gets used in is the last fight of Garden Salvation. Uh, and that's already a very tight DPS window that Xenophage barely fits in. Lowering its overall DPS I think ruins it in that fight. I We'll have to test it to see, of course. Okay, so I actually need to make a uh, I need to admit I don't use Xenophage without having Warmind Cells on. That's fair also. I mean, oh, that's so, what it sees you send. It'll still pop oracles for you. There you go. <laughs> and I also use it in Atheon because it one pops oracles without without having to think about them. Yeah. They become a secondary mechanic in the fight. Um, but yeah, I, I basically just use them with Warmind Cells. And I use... It's funny because Xenophage is a machine gun, but I use it more as a scout rifle mm -hmm. that I know is going to one-shot enemies. And right, I mean, that's cells. kind of the thing. It it replaced Whisper of the Worm as the, like, solar heavy weapon. Um, but you're talking about specifically for DPSing bosses. Yeah. I never really used it to DPS bosses. Like, it's it's a bad option. There are much better options for but DPSing bosses. But it used bosses. to be a good option. <laughs> at at not, least specifically not really. in the garden even, fight. Even when we were talking about the garden, garden, even when we were talking about Garden of Salvation, it wasn't that it was optimal DPS. It was that it was reliable DPS. Right. And uh, if you're running, like, a full six-stack team, you're not running you know party finder that's fine because then you're you're more prepared to be able to do you know sniper damage or whatever and better take advantage of the dps window but if you're running party finder which most people do i think that most people relied on xenophage because it just was so reliable for them not because it was the best it was reliable and now i don't think it's as reliable as it was but it'll still pop oracles so <laughs> yeah, the uses the uses were here and there. So, yeah. and honestly, I'm not worried about the DPS meta for a two year old raid. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be completely honest, like, are we worried about what the DPS meta is for Riven? Uh, I mean, yeah, I always am. I'm always sad whenever people just clear Riven, no problem. It's right, but raid. that's because it's bugged. That's a good raid. Play it the way it's supposed to be. Uh, you know it's not going to be played the way it's supposed to be anymore? Fighting Lion is going into the vault. <laughs> <laughs> you like these segues? We're really getting them good. <laughs> practice. Practice. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to uh, read off the changes here. Fighting mm -hmm. Lion reserve ammo increased from a lot to infinite. I don't like that line. <laughs> Receives the same changes as other breach grenade launchers, which we'll have to go into. Right. Um, reduced base reload stat to zero. Breach grenade launchers with zero reload stat reload very, very slowly. Now increases reload speed to its previous level on damaging multiple enemies with one grenade. Well, we'll keep an eye on this. 
and but we believe it's a good change. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't be manually reloading fight fighting line anyways. Yeah, I mean, on the surface level, you're like, oh, it's not that bad. But for how most people used Fighting Lion, this is a bad change for it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it yeah. more puts it in line with how it's supposed to be used, like with its perks and everything. But... But that dang. was never how it was used. <laughs> dang. <laughs> dang. <laughs> so, another, another uh, good gun going into mm-hmm. the vault. You know what's going to come out of the vault for you and hopefully come out of the vault of glass at some point for me? <laughs> Vex Mythoclast. They buffed this to where I think this is going to be the best weapon of the meta. <laughs> I think everybody's going to be running this next season because fusion rifles have a champion mod. Mm-hmm. But let's start with the first change. PVE damage bonus increased by 40%. Which, I mean, that on its own is already, like, a huge buff. Yeah. And then you take into account these other changes, and it's, like, stacking. <laughs> right. I just wanted to point out, like, that is a steep damage yeah. buff. They don't usually go that heavy into a buff. Like, it's usually, this, like, This might 20%. be an issue. Yeah. But... <laughs> Let's go through the rest. Range stat increase to be near best in class for high impact auto rifles. Increased stability. Reworked catalyst to grant stability and damage after a kill. Increased rate of fire from 360 to 390. Reduced linear fusion rifle mode charge time from 820 to 533. No longer loses overcharge stacks on stow except when in linear fusion rifle mode. Right. Increased damage, right. range, right. stability, uh-huh. catalyst, mm-hmm. rate of fire, charge mm-hmm. time, mm-hmm. and the exotic perk. Right. This thing is going to be a laser that fires incredibly fast. It has near the best high uh, uh, range of high impact auto rifles, which are already the like high range version of an auto rifle. So that's crazy. No, I wasn't shaking my head. No, I'm shaking my head in disbelief. Yeah. Uh, And then the reduced linear fusion rifle mode. I mean, this kind of makes sense, but at the same time, it went from an 820 down to 533. That's crazy. That's a third. I'm not a big linear fusion rifle guy, but just based on the numbers, I mean, Mm. right, they're cutting down a third almost down to half i mean Mm -hmm. hey i guess they'll be we'll be talking about the nerf coming in season 16 because all that saying it's doing 40 percent bonus damage in pve with its catalyst giving it basically kill clip i'm assuming with the damage after a kill or maybe rampage i hope it drops for me (laughs) I really do. So I when are we doing the... that catalyst run? <laughs> you guys can do that catalyst run whenever you want. <laughs> okay, let's move on. You guys are you guys are merciless. Um, <laughs> <laughs> for merciless, we had to touch this anyway because fusion rifle changes. But we figured. Uh, while we're in there, we might as well make a buff we've been thinking about. Updated perk to account for fewer shots per burst should build up charge rate at the same amount per burst as before. And we'll get to it in the fusion rifle changes, but they're decreasing the number of shots in some archetypes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then reduce the damage penalty for increasing charge rate by 40%. So essentially, it's again a 40% buff. Yeah. Uh, not as amazing as Vex, of course, because nothing should be as amazing what they just did to Vex. But, but I'm they liking make a good these. point. Yeah, I'm liking they... this change to Merciless. Right. I, I like the change. I don't think I'm going to use it. Maybe I will. Who knows? It's a fusion rifle. I'll use it for meta. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um. You can use it. I miss. Get your Vex. I miss Merciless because Merciless used to be meta back in like month one of mm-hmm. Leviathan. Yeah. On bathers. And I just miss using Merciless. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It, Nostalgia. It's a, f- it's a fun weapon. It was also, yeah, it was good in bathers. It was somewhat good fighting Callus himself. 
uh, it's just fun having, you know, it goes slow and then you're just like, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> right. Um, Jotun is also getting some changes. Produce Reduced charge more. time from 8 .82 seconds to 0.78 seconds. So it, char it charges faster. Okay, they're trolling us because back in Destiny 1 during Taken King, they made a 0.04 increase to auto rifles. Mm -hmm. You remember that? Yeah. They're, they made that change. Nobody's going to notice that change. No. They also slightly reduced the damage per shot. They did nothing to change Yoden because they can't change Yoden. If they made it, if they nerfed it in any way, no one's going to use it because it's already kind of bad. If my they guess, buffed it, it'd be too good. <laughs> my guess is that if you run high resilience, you might be able to survive it. That, if you're that, at 100 that'd resilience. Cool. That'd be cool. Because it, it's an annoying thing to die to. It's not like op overpowered. But it's annoying whenever you walk around a corner and you hear the toaster warm up and you're already dead. <laughs> right. Like, you, you run as fast as you can and it still manages to follow you around a wall. Mm -hmm. Um. Another fusion rifle getting a big change is Bastion. Reduced damage by 15%. Increased spread by 10%. Increased PvE damage by 25%. Yeah, so all in all it's getting a 10% buff in PvE, but a minus 15% in PvP. Which is good. You now fire all three bursts of your Bastion, and you don't kill the Guardian that you're hitting. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. I... I'm I'm okay with that because to me Bastion's a cheese weapon. It's like Jotun. What what fusion rifle can't one tap a guardian? Uh Bastion. Well, no, other fusion rifles can't. I mean, they can if you set up the right circumstances. If you put a damage buff on you, you you're still one tapping with Bastion. But uh like for instance, the ritual weapon does not one tap you have to be in the right circumstances for it to one tap, usually by running like a charge with light build or something. Well, to the viewers, don't ever take my advice on using a fusion rifle in PvP, because I don't play PvP and I don't use fusion they're, rifles. They're so I don't better know what now. they're like. <laughs> they're better now, especially with the buffs that we'll be talking about. Uh, they're kind of like an anti-shotgun. But at the time, they were bad. I think with the changes, Bastion will still feel pretty good in PvP, but it's not going to one-shot you, because... It's done that for too long. It's like Anarchy. It's been a premier weapon that everyone's talked about. Put it in your vault for a little bit. <laughs> Pick, okay, up a Pick up a plug one. Pick up a plug one. They're good. You're the PvP expert in this uh, group of two. So <laughs> so uh, I will defer to you. Um, Last exotic change, sweet businesses perk. Refilling the magazine when picking up primary no longer works in a world without primary ammo, so it's been adjusted. Right. Now refills magazine on picking up special heavy ammo instead of primary. Mm -hmm. Or Axiom War Rig and just... Right. Rally Barricade. Burr. <laughs> Burr. <laughs> the, um, it's the Titan's gun. And it's going to stay the Titan's gun. <laughs> yeah, I feel like they need exotic weapons for the Hunter and uh, Warlock that are as clearly linked to their class uh, as sweet I, businesses to Titans. I, I would say the Warlocks have Thorn because of their gloves. Okay, I'll give you that. Hunters, Hunters get shafted I mean, again. Yeah, go away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's jump back up, and mm -hmm. we'll take a look at the archetype changes. Uh, I'll let you go ahead and read through these ones, just because you have a better uh, grasp of specific weapon archetypes. Right. Uh, so one of the big ones that's being changed right now is a pain point currently in PvP. It's been a pain point since they've been nerfing shotguns so much. That's Breach Grenade Launchers, the new tube, uh, as the oldies like to call it. It's getting some changes, and that's why also they had to specifically address uh, li Line Rampant. Not Line Rampant. Um, fighting Lion. Fighting Lion. <laughs> line Rampant's is the Titan pants. Uh, so it's getting some changes. The blast radius of it is being reduced from 
uh, by 0.4 meters. Uh, the blast radius will decrease from 4.55 at max to 4.15. Uh, not a huge change. Um, all in all, but also with that, the splash damage is being reduced by 20. Uh, and all this is without any mods or anything that's buffing it. This is, like, just bare normal for the archetype. Right. Um, so it's getting just some general changes to make it to where the splash damage isn't so bad in PvP to where it brings your shield down and you can get one tap with a pistol shot afterwards. But at the same time, in PvE, shouldn't have all that much of an effect. Um, they're also increasing the damage in PvE by 12% to help with it. And it says, because of the above splash damage change, this results in a small overall buff to the combined damage. Yep. Which, so, pretty good. <laughs> right. Wither Horde's so, an effect. <laughs> well, I don't know how Wither Horde could be affected. It works in a completely separate manner from all these. Yeah. Um, machine guns are getting a damage buff of 20%. Again, uh, not all of them will be getting the buff, specifically Xenophage. Xenophage. I'm okay, I'm having a, I'm having a tough time with <laughs> names tonight. I don't know what's gotten into me. Uh, so it won't be getting as much as the twenty percent, but across the board, otherwise you should be getting a twenty percent buff. And I'm looking at my Thunderlord going, hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, also, the new machine gun from the raid. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, that's about measures. it. I don't really use corrective measures. Um, and also the one from Deepstone Crypt as well. Mm -hmm. Might see an uptick in use. Um, I do want to point out that when we were talking about machine guns a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. I said their primary job was ad clear. Yep. Bungie and confirmed that. Bungie confirms it's ad clear. With still being an option for single target sustained damage, but not the best. Right. Um... I do hope... It's been so long since I've used Thunderlord. Mm -hmm. Would that be a good ad clear weapon now? Uh, yeah, honestly, I wanted to get a Catalyst, but I think it would be pretty good, honestly, with the Thunder Strikes and everything, because that also does a little bit of AoE. Uh, I, I'm might definitely going to try, try, try that one. Yeah, yeah, I might try that out next season. Uh, scout oh. Rifles and Hand Cannons are getting a buff uh, in PvE where they're getting increased damage versus miners by 15%. So they can one-shot miners pretty effectively. I'd like to see a little bit more, but... Um, I would have liked to see that this season, when scout rifles and hand cannons were champion mods, had champion yeah. mods. Nobody's going to be using scout rifles and hand cannons next season because they don't have champion mods. <laughs> uh, but I do like the change. My hand cannon should one-tap red bars all mm -hmm. the time, unless I'm shooting them from a dumb distance away. And we said this last week, and I'll say it again. Hawkmoon's looking nice. <laughs> Jesus, you're right. Fusion rifles are getting a change. Uh, they thought about a s several different changes they could make, actually, to fusion rifles. But they wound up with uh, increased PvE damage bonus uh, from all subfamilies of... Fusion rifle. So every fusion rifle is getting a 15% PvE bonus, not linear fusion. So those are different. Um, previously, High Impact had a 0% PvE bonus damage. I don't understand that, but now it's getting going back to 15% while everything else is joining it there. Uh, this is a buff overall to every frame of fusion rifle damage wise. Uh, then they try to separate the families a little bit more by changing things like charge time and the number of bolts shot from them. High impacts now charge slower, uh, which makes it where you have to really plan out, if, like pre-charge, peak, fire kind of thing. Uh, the base charge time increased from 0.86 seconds to a full second. Uh, but the shots were reduced also from 7 to 5. Um, they reduced the total damage per burst. And what this re 
results in is by having less shots, you are you get less recoil, thus you don't have to spec into stability and can spec more into range. Thus, this is more of a long range, like combative fusion rifle. Um, so it's doing a little bit less damage, but also at higher ranges. So you won't get damage fall off until much farther. It, it's basically bridging linear fusion rifles and regular mm -hmm. fusion rifles. Yeah. And honestly, it might become my go-to special uh, archetype, especially with the champion mods next season. Mm -hmm. Just because, I don't know, I, I always felt like you had to get too close with a fusion rifle for it to be effective in right. high-end content. And if you're going to do that, why not use a shotgun or a sword? Mm -hmm. I think spreading out how effective, because you got to think shotguns are incredibly close range. Snipers are incredibly long range and grenade launchers are kind of their own thing over there. So we're not going to talk about them for now. We are fusion already <laughs> rifles. Well, right. But my point is, is that fusion <laughs> rifles are supposed to span the distance between the two of those as a special weapon. Right. And I feel like now that they've, change this uh made these changes to high impacts i think that now we'll, we'll have that longer range option mm -hmm. well, not only that but the changes also to sliding uh i think will help fusion rifles out a lot because now you can't just slide in and get that shot on the person with the fusion rifle which is always what happens right you're standing there with the fusion rifle you're charging it looking at that shotgun guy and he's up in your face already and blows your head off right um uh, I, I, li I like the changes. Uh, also, with precision and adeptives, uh, this is kind of where I think they, the changes are like hitting a sweet spot for fusion rifles, honestly. The base charge time is the same, because they are already pretty solid, uh, as it was. The shots per burst is unchanged. There's still seven shots, so stability's still the same. Uh, very slightly increase the total damage per burst. Now, they say very slightly, there was already a pretty close gap between high impacts and precisions. The main difference was with uh, uh, adaptive, sorry. The, uh, the main difference was with range. The high impacts had a higher range. So if they dropped down the high impacts and rose the adaptives, I think the adaptives will be a better DPS option than high impacts, but maybe not as safe. Right. Um, and it... It, uh, what, one of the reasons why I really like it is plug one is an adaptive frame and uh, it's going to be good. <laughs> it's going to uh, be an interesting season next season. Fusion rifles are going to be everywhere for the first mm -hmm. time since I think Destiny 1. Yeah. So. And then we have rapid fires getting honestly the most changes out of the archetypes. Uh, their base charge time was decreased from 0.54 seconds to 0.46 seconds. Shots per burst was increased from 7 to 9. <laughs> uh, increased total damage per burst. So they're doing even more damage than they already did, and they were the highest damaging uh, archetype with the least range. Um, and th it's completely made to counter shotguns. That's entirely what they did to it. Uh, which is a, which is a good a, a good uh, archetype to fit into, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like it it bridges that if you don't want to be up in somebody's face with a shotgun, or you see a shotgun rusher coming towards you, you can now switch to rapid fires, because this this is basically just going to be spray and pray. Yeah, nine uh, nine shots, and really low range. I mean, you're basically just hip firing these, mm -hmm. which. All of this, I believe, should still affect Bastion on top of the Bastion changes, which is why I think Bastion will still be pretty good, because it should get... Uh, well, actually, it's not getting its charge time changed, is it? I was going to say that... No, they're that increasing it... its spread and reducing its damage, but it, it's... Oh, okay. Its charge time should be increased, so maybe you can get off a second burst before you're dead. Probably not. But, <laughs> yeah, that chance. Poor, poor Bastion. Um, increased the stability also on these rapid fires and you can kind of counteract that but again you're not going as far into range which is fine that's pretty balanced i think um 
also because of the changes they're changing how some of the perks work won't go too far into this but they're basically changing perks that affect your charge time and how that is reflected on the stats shown it's basically everything that they're changing they're changing backup plan liquid coils and accelerated coils uh the depth charge time mod um and the charge time masterwork and how those are all reflected in the stats of the archetypes in order to keep them from changing that charge time too much and make putting it putting it in the wrong archetype yeah uh which i didn't realize that they also had to go back and adjust the fusion rifle stat uh, stat orders in your inventory because it would display them different from how it shows every other weapon stability and handling were out of order compared to every other weapon that's so random that's random and how long has it been like that (laughs) i have no idea (laughs) Um. uh yeah so big changes to fusion rivals including all exotic fusions uh so we'll have a look at that in the future and i think that's it for the weapon changes that are coming for the yes for the archetype changes that's it there were a couple perk changes oh yes um, firing line we like the idea of the perk it was just giving away a bit too much damage for almost free reduced damage bonus to plus 20 percent for all supported weapon archetypes We'll roll on some snipers, linear fusions, and machine guns. And maybe some other stuff in the future. I mean, so I have a sniper rifle. Yeah. I have a sniper rifle with firing line. Uh, I can't remember what one it was. I think it was from the Prophecy Dungeon. Um, Never used it. I don't know many people that are, like, going out of their way with firing line because it's a little bit too situational. You have to have two other people with you. In order to get so, the most since we can no longer use Xenophage for the Sanctified Mind, mm-hmm. now we can just use our uh, use our Tranquilities again. Since yeah, we're, since we're two years ago right now, I um, guess <laughs> that that was the only fight I ever remember Fire in Line being meta for. Yeah. Um. And now know. it's now now it's not because it's, it's, it got nerfed. <laughs> it seems needlessly nerfed, right? I think Nobody... they ha- they had to adjust it for the fact that it's going to appear on another weapon in the future. That they're like, it's too much on that. Let's tone it down a little bit so it's more in line. Because uh, they they've done this before with perks. So uh, uh, other perks are getting buffs though that I'm surprised about. <laughs> Kill Clip, Rampage, and Adrenaline Junkie will now have their bonus damage on detonation damage for things like Explosive Payload and stuff like that. So it's just going to make different god rolls of Fatebringer? Is this what I'm hearing? Yeah, if you have a Kill Clip Explosive, you're good. Or uh, Kill Clip Firefly or whatever, you're good. That's, it's going to do yeah, a lot think, more damage. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I like the changes. I'm surprised yeah. they're making them since I feel like it was only four or five seasons ago where they had to reduce Kill Clip and Rampage's effectiveness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm surprised, too. Those are still two of the biggest like sought-after perks on weapons. And the Adrenaline Junkie less so because it has too much to get it activated (laughs) but i guess they're even more sought after because now they'll both they'll buff more damage um i'm looking through the rest of the twab here i do see a couple interesting things linear fusion rifles and caster frame swords are still not where we want them to be so expect some tweaks this Mm -hmm. is the more distant future this is not coming soon right um we're also looking at underused exotics and we'll be taking a pass at some of them, including Arbalist, Soros Regime, Cryostesia, and Malfeasance. And more. And more. Yeah, yeah uh, Cryostesia again. I don't think you can do much to that gun to make it worth it. Soros, though, it has been a weapon that has been like meta-defining in the past. So they're going to have to be careful with changes to that. I think they're going to have their hands full with Vex Mythoclust for a while. Nobody's going to be running Soros Regime. That's fair. (laughs) 
Uh, with Arbalest, I do want to mention, it's mentioned somewhere, I'm not entirely sure where, but it's getting a, the, uh, anti-barrier built into it. I did see that. I did see that, and I think that's a good exotic perk yeah. for it. I, so it'll be anti-barrier with the ability to buff your cadet, because it has disruption break. <laughs> So it'll buff its own damage. <laughs> I'm just imagining a grandmaster, and you just hear the dang arbalist like, <laughs> put, put if you can put the sound in here. But like, that is just that, that's going to be funny to listen to, and then it's going to be annoying to listen to. Um, which queen to me on? We've talked previously about wanting legendary weapons to have more identity based on their source, and expect to ship a new system for this close to which queen. Season 15, tweaked exotic primary weapons to generate ammo faster through ammo finder mods. And we have another change plan to make them more enticing and hard PvE content. Oh, that's another thing that we completely forgot was that they're changing how the ammo economy works to where your kinetic weapon has a higher chance of giving you special and heavy ammo. Right, and it looks like exotic have... primary weapons are going to have an even bigger right. increase so hawk moon yeah. <laughs> not just hawk moon but going back to uh, the sweet business the sweet business auto reloads when you pick up special and heavy ammo <laughs> so hunters and warlocks can use this too yeah oh this isn't going to be busted at all nope <laughs> um there is some information again about bungee relief efforts yeah um Donate if you can. Uh, Bungie's cool always emblem. very good. Pretty cool looking emblem for mm -hmm. direct donations. But um, Bungie's always good with their charity work. They, uh, historically in the past, they try and get as much money out to these kinds of things as possible. And like Haiti needs it right now. <laughs> yeah. So uh, if you have some extra time and a little bit uh, of extra money to spare they've got a good uh foundation set up mm -hmm. i'll link it in the description yeah um other than that make sure you claim your rewards uh turn in your vanguard tokens although i started to and i don't think i'm going to keep doing it it's i have depressing. two thousand still i have more than two thousand and i spent a little bit of time exchanging them <laughs> um let's talk about one other big piece of news yep uh, it's something that we've been asking for as a community, and we're finally getting it. Anti-cheat. <laughs> so, this was not in the TWAB, but we did get a tweet uh, that Bungie said they are happy to now be starting a partnership with BattleEye. Mm -hmm. Which, BattleEye is not the, like... It, it, it's, it's kind of a mixed bag for an anti-cheat. Like, they, they use it for Rainbow Six Siege, and they still have a flood of cheaters over there, but in some other games, there's like little to none because of Battle Eye. So, kind of depends, I think, on the package the developers get or something. Yeah, um, I don't know. I'm hopeful now because they're addressing cheating. Mm -hmm. They're addressing the reward system. Mm -hmm. They're addressing how often they're going to be coming out with content. I think over the next year. Uh, all my PvP main friends will be vindicated if they stuck with this game. Yeah. If they're PvP only. I don't know how people manage to be PvP only and stick with this game for this long, but it looks like finally, finally, they're making substantive changes mm -hmm. that will bring people back to playing PvP in this game. It'll never be uh, eSport, but... no. It can have a healthy PvP population. I am very happy with what I've seen from Bungie these past few weeks even. Uh, not to mention this past month or so. They've they've really been working with the community. Every patch change that they've made, like, we went over it. A lot of these changes are PvE and PvP specific, which is good. The sandboxes need to be different. And they're finally realizing that. And now they're finally bringing in an anti-cheat, which hopefully is going on top of their supposed three-layer anti-cheat that they have in system. So if that's the case, maybe we'll see even more. Plus they're, su too. plus they're suing cheaters now. It seems like they 
they've finally they're finally starting to hear some of the concerns that pvp has been yelling from the rooftops for two three years now yeah it's it's been a while since they've cared about it's their been pvp a long base. time i, I mean it, time. it's still it's still been like it's been months since pvp has been talked about and it's been a long time since like a new map or anything came out um I like these are back. I, 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 I like that the Trials of the Nine weapons are back, but maybe they should brought back the game mode. Maybe. <laughs> well, any other thoughts before we close out uh, for season 14? No, but if you're still sticking around to the video, first off, hi, love you. Uh, second off, Thank tune, you. tune in next week because... They hid stuff from us for a reason, and I feel like next week we're going to have a lot to talk about. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been a very busy couple of last few weeks as far as Destiny news has been concerned. Mm -hmm. um, and now that I think we've got all of our vacations out of our system for the summer, we'll be able to be a little bit more timely with getting these news updates out to you guys. So, uh, And with that, uh, we'll go ahead and close out this episode of Tower Talk. That's Coda. I'm Shank. Uh, this has been Absolutely PlayStation Steam Gamers. 